Swans, the royalty of the bird world, are dicks. Majestic dicks. <laughs> I'm Danielle Dufault and you're watching Animal Logic. Swans are the giants of waterfowl, with the largest species weighing in at more than 15 kilograms with a wingspan of up to 3 meters. The word swan brings to mind an image of an elegant white bird floating peacefully on a quiet pond. The reality is a bit different. Swans can be pretty mean, especially when they're nesting. They can be aggressive jerks to other water birds, using their size to push smaller birds out of good territories and to hog all the food for themselves. Swans will even take a run at humans under some circumstances, usually when they get too close to their nests. One poor fellow in Chicago actually drowned after being pushed out of his kayak by a swan who then prevented him from swimming ashore. See? Total dicks! There are six or seven species of true swans, including the familiar European mute swan, so the one with the orange beak, and the native North American trumpeter swan, the one with the black beak. Most of the species are the familiar white color, but Australia is home to the black swan. No, not Natalie Portman, which are, as you might imagine, distinctively black in color. Weirdly enough, all the mute swans in England and Wales are owned by the Queen. These swans are protected by law, and there are stiff penalties for interfering with them, especially with a nesting pair. Way to go, Liz! Our native trumpeter swan is an enormous bird and was a favorite target for hunters looking for food and feathers. One of the newer pressures on our poor trumpeters is competition from mute swans, which are native to Europe. They were introduced to North America when trumpeters started disappearing, and they've made themselves quite at home. So much so that some people consider mute swans a pest species. If you're wondering, no, the queen does not own the mute swans in North America. Before you start thinking that swans are just the big bullies of the avian world, consider some of their more noble attributes. Swans mate for life, forming monogamous pair bonds with each other and sticking together through thick and thin. These pair bonds can last a long time, as swans can easily live 20 years or more, even in the wild. They usually don't pair up until they're about five years old, and sometimes they go without a mate for up to 20 years until they find the one. True love is worth waiting for, I guess. Instances of divorce have been seen, but it isn't very common. Monogamy has advantages because together a pair can raise more young, called cygnets, which are born after a month or so from one of the largest, heaviest eggs around. Usually a pair will nest four to six eggs, although sometimes more are successfully hatched. The one documented case found a pair raising 15 cygnets, which is a lot of mouths to feed. Turned out that nine of those young were their own, and the remaining six cygnets were adopted from another pair that died. Aww. And how about this? If one member of a swan pair dies, the other will finish raising the young and then go through a grieving period before finding another mate. See? I told you they had nice qualities. Have a favorite animal you'd like to see featured? Let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every week. To learn about the life of swans in the city, check out this great new show, City Wildlife Rescue, which is about the rehabilitation of animals at the Toronto Wildlife Centre. I'll put a link down below. Make sure you go check them out and donate if you can. Thanks for watching.